Well, this is a good morning to show you that I have brought wind chimes down from the back area to put around my porch. Uh, it's a little bit breezy this morning. We're going to be getting rain storms later, so all my wind chimes are chiming. But um, this is a nice one. This is a woodstock chime, and I painted it because the wood was getting dry and brittle. So I just covered up the chimes and gave it a little spray. So hopefully I've given that a longer life. And then over on this side, I put up a shepherd's hook and hung another woodstock chime. And we'll go a little closer so I can show you it. This is a really pretty one and it's got a beautiful turquoise ceramic circle down here and it has a little bit of a higher pitch. So I just love sitting out here and listening to the wind chimes. It's instant relaxation. And um, I've been busy getting all of my potted areas planted up. I got that cute little wind spinner at the Dollar Tree. I just thought it was fun and it might um, keep the squirrels or birds from eating my little zinnia seedlings. These are a dwarf size uh, mixed color zinnia, but I thought that would be a good deterrent and cute at the same time. These are geranium plants that I grew from seed and um, alyssum that I sprinkled around. I have it sprinkled everywhere in the garden. Looks like we're going to get some weather. Look at my little daisy spinning away. My little blue daisy. Here's my other geranium grown from seed. I'm really thrilled with how well it did. I only had four seeds left. It was an old packet. But I think next year I'm going to grow some more. It wasn't that hard. Just started it in uh, around Valentine's Day. And, you know, they really take off once they come outside and feel that warm weather. And then over here I'll just give you a peek at the tri triangle garden. I don't know if you can see, but I have all my tomatoes planted up along the railing here and I'm going to let the daffodil foliage die back but I have zinnias throughout and some marigolds and salvia up front. They're tiny right now but they'll grow fast and these are salvia that come back every year and I, I did a little bit of rearranging so I rearranged where they were but they'll be all across here. The clematis blooms are starting to open, so in about a week that'll be completely pink from top to bottom. And I see some iris buds coming up here on my original stand of irises, so I'll be excited to see what colors those turn out to be. With the heat this week, everything really spring into life. And my tiny little tomato seedlings have probably uh, gotten 10 times what they were. And I have planted out some bean sprouts. Now I sprouted these in pots because I do have squirrels. And anytime I plant something like a seed or a bean, they like to eat it. They like to dig it up. So I went ahead and grew the plants and then planted them in yesterday. So I think, I think they're going to be safe. And then I have a row of carrot seeds all across the bottom here. So we'll see uh, across the front. I have a few blooms up here by the red bud. I don't give this much attention here, but it looks like I have a columbine blooming and my lavender is coming up, which will bloom later. And I have some violas, which are still going strong, even though we've had quite a lot of heat. And next to it, the Autumn Joy Sedum plant looks fantastic. Of course, that'll bloom later. Look how pretty my little pink garden looks through the red bud tree and behind the spice and flower garden. I'm really tickled with this area that I created. It looks like this plant is finally going to give me some blueberries if the birds don't get it first. It's covered with these beautiful little bell-shaped blossoms all throughout and I think if those are pollinated which they should be we have plenty of bees around here those should turn into blueberries my parsley's filling in really well down here this is all self-seeded 
This is a little boxwood I popped in there. But this was all self-seeded from plants that were here last year. So parsley is really easy to establish in a pot. You just grow it and then once it goes to seed, you kind of make sure that some of those seeds get back down into the same pot. Very easy. These are beautiful. I think these are called Mexican daisies and it's a weed around here, but I do let some of them grow because look at how pretty that is, guys. It's even pretty in a bouquet. It almost reminds me of feverfew, but um, of course the pollinators love it, but I think that's so pretty. So I do let some of it grow in certain areas and um, I don't know, it just sort of signals that spring is here. And here's a pretty stand of columbine. These are a gorgeous color. I really love it. So pretty. And the leaves, one, even, even the leaves on a columbine plant are really gorgeous. I think they're so beautiful. But that color just gets me. I love it. It's kind of a violet pink. Speaking of a violet pink, here are my azaleas. I've had these in the ground for a couple of years, and they're getting a little bigger, but I just love the color of these. As I pick shrubs and flowers, I really go for these colors. I think it's so beautiful. And these might be my favorite hostas. They, they appeared in the last couple weeks. They're gorgeous. They're called guacamole hostas and they really do look like a bowl of guacamole aren't they pretty they're just the prettiest green especially in front of those azalea blooms i started a new pile of compost behind the polytunnel so that'll be going strong all year and i'll have compost close by to these gardens by the time fall rolls around, I should be able to spread some nice fresh compost on these so that I keep the soil nice from year to year. But uh, I have reorganized this whole area and sort of consolidated all of my containers and I think it looks nice. But I have um, snap peas finally taking off. They did a whole bunch of nothing. I planted them too early. And I have a beautiful beefsteak tomato right here, which again has timesed itself by 10 since I planted it. And my beautiful azalea from my friend Lori is blooming white. I've had that now for two or three years. And I always try to top that off with compost every year and fertilizer because it is in a pot. And I, I assume the roots can go down into the ground if they need to, but it does well in the pot, so I keep it there. And then again, more parsley that seeded itself in its own pot. And my zucchini sprouts have really taken off in the heat this week. Gosh, it looks really dry. Um, we have had no rain in a couple weeks, so I'm really happy that the rain is going to kick up later. But um, I did put lentils in here because it refreshes the soil and adds some nitrogen. And zucchini are heavy feeders. So hopefully those lentils will sprout and it's going to be some nice green manure for my two zucchini plants over here. And these are um, some beautiful healthy looking little zinnias. And it looks like something is eating um, my daikon radish leaves, which is fine. I don't mind. Sometimes it's just nice to have that daikon radish foliage to put in my compost bin. I've got some healthy looking, I think these are wax beans growing, type of bush bean. So I'll be excited to see that. And I don't remember what I sprinkled around here. Gosh, they almost look like tomato seedlings, but we'll have to see what comes up around there. Sometimes I just sprinkle things underneath to make to create a living mulch and I forget what I've done. Oh I shouldn't forget to show you the chives are all in bloom and some of those seeds will fall and hopefully create more little chive plants. I'll also put some aside to cultivate in little pots so I can 
uh, fill in some of the gaps. I did divide a couple of plants and and uh, put them in. This is one of the starts that I put in. And then these daikon radish are going to seed and flower and then seed, I should say. And um, the foliage kind of dies back when that happens. The plant puts its energy into creating flowers and seed. But they make wonderful radish, any type of radish, make wonderful pods. So if those uh, roots don't turn into nice fat radishes for me, I can go ahead and eat the pods and they're a little bit spicy. They're a good snack. Well, it sure looks like the wind is kicking up. I hope it doesn't make it too hard to hear me. I did want to show you how well my turnips are doing. I've never gotten such good turnips before. I think I had one great turnip once in the garden soil. But these I grew in a uh, shallow container like this and I transplanted them to this larger one and they are just taking off like gangbusters. And then I have some green onions planted back there. They're all going to flower right now. And I'll make sure a lot of that seed gets down back into the soil once they go, those flowers go to seed. And then here are my peppers. And um, I did scatter some petunia seeds. I've never grown petunias from seed, so I don't have high expectations. Um, it was just petunia seed from the dollar store, so we'll see what happens. We'll see how that goes. But one thing that does really well from the dollar store is alyssum seed. And I'll just give you a peek over here. All of my alyssum seed, which I have in lots of different pots all over the yard, has really come in thick. These are my little Japanese maple babies. It all looks very dry, but it's probably going to get a good soak later from the rainstorm. But all of my alyssum seeds, everywhere I scattered them, have come in nice and thick. Oh, this side of the azalea looks even prettier. Wow, you know, white, I think white flowers are very underrated. That looks just gorgeous. I'm wondering if I should add some white azaleas to my pink garden. That could be a pretty accent. Something to think about. I have to be careful back here by the rustic garden. Yesterday I was chased by an angry bee and the same thing happened to me last year. Just one bee was being very aggressive and circling my head and buzzing my ears and I had to keep running in. It wasn't a very productive garden day, but I think when it's windy and cooler, they don't come out of their hives. And um, if I haven't mentioned it recently, my neighbors do keep hives um, just right on the other side of that fence. I think they have like three hives set up. I guess that's what they're called. But I do see beekeepers coming and tending to it. Um, but this time of year it must be mating season or something. Um, there's one angry scout bee that'll come out. But as you can see, this garden's taking off. And I added some uh, columbine here because this end of the bed is a little bit um, shadier than the, the side down there. That gets more sun. So I've been putting more sun-loving plants down at that end. And then down here I put more shade-loving plants. My sweet william do well wherever they are. And um, as you can see, they're about to put out some flowers here. There's some little pink buds showing up. So these will be a gorgeous display in no time. I've got some hookahs back there. So those are nice coral bells. And uh, I seeded a lot of plants and now I've forgotten <laughs> what I put out. So it'll have to be a surprise. It looks like I might want to take out my artichokes. I'm hoping that the rabbits don't eat my artichoke plants, but they're kind of outgrowing their little basket cloches, so I think I'll take those off. But those are going to be big artichoke plants, I hope. And I discovered 
Oh, here's a little bit down here, something I planted. I have a feeling this could be basil or thyme. I'm not sure. I scattered some seeds around, but we'll see. But I did discover I had a third agastache, but I have three agastache down here, and already these tiny plants smell so wonderful. Oh, here's a sweet William here, and that one's starting to open. These are going to be spectacular, I think, in a week or two. I'm excited about that. So there's still a lot of space on the bed that I see, but I filled in with a lot of seeds and all of these plants are gonna expand and get bigger. And it looks like we have some kind of squash here that one of the squirrels probably planted and forgot about. Could be a pumpkin, because I did put pumpkins with seeds into my compost and it could be that a squirrel planted a pumpkin seed there, but I think I'll leave it. I like to leave volunteers when they come up, if I can. This is a whole bunch of blank space in here, so if seeds don't fill in, I'll come along with plants. But that end is looking quite full. And these two mounds here are, are nice stands of oregano, so I'll be sure to take a lot of that as cuttings and dry it, make a big bottle of oregano before it goes to flower. So the rustic garden is coming along well and I'm happy to say the angry bee must be sleeping in its hive because I was able to show you how this is doing. One thing that's created a lot of flowers for the pollinators are the brassicas and this happens to be my collard. This is one collard from last year, a big, long, gangly collard, but it makes the most beautiful yellow flowers. They're very pretty. And those, of course, will turn into seed pods. I grew about six plants, six or eight plants from seed, and they're coming along nicely. And also what's coming along nicely in here, especially at the end, are some tomato seedlings. And you can see how they grow. A tomato drops and all those little seedlings grow. So that's happened in a few places. And I may take a couple of those and grow them on just to see what kind of tomato they make. I'm sure it's a cherry tomato. But the collards are doing really well. And I also sprinkled out some very, very old seed. It was a Black Knight Scabiosa. Um, so we'll see. I just did that yesterday, and we'll see if those end up taking off. But I, I was looking through my seed stash, and I realized I'd never planted them. I probably bought them four years ago, so I don't have high hopes. But, you know, if you don't scatter the seed, they definitely won't grow. And this honeysuckle coming over from my neighbor's yard is just creating such perfume in the air. I just love the smell of it and especially in the breeze. It's really beautiful. I put some other turnips from my little container back here too. Some of them are really taking off, but I figure it'll kind of cover the soil with their foliage, and it also tills the soil as well. And here's a couple more um, little clumps of tomato seedlings and you can see wherever a tomato dropped and I did have a cherry tomato very delicious cherry tomato growing in here last year so I will definitely take some of those seedlings and see if I can plant them up so guys I hope you enjoyed my quick tour of the garden before the rain comes I think I'm gonna go in out of my wooded area. I don't think it's a good idea to be in the woods on a windy day. But I just wanted to show you how everything is bursting into life and each week we get more and more to see. So I hope you're having fun in your spring gardens and things are growing nicely for you as well. I'll see you next time.